Very early in the story, Fujimoto gives significance to the door. When an author gives some significance to a seemingly random object, the reader can't help but pay attention to it and keep it in their mind. Okay, with that being said, look at this. Tatsuki Fujimoto, the mangaka behind Chainsaw Man, used this technique as a way to guide his story and he spread the amount of times he used the door throughout the story and then near the end of part 1 he finally filled us on in what it is. This is just one example of Fujimoto's brilliance. He uses visual storytelling in this and in other moments in the manga to convey something that can be explained with just words. I'll dive deeper into the significance of the door later in the video. It's not really a hot take to say that if his stories were turned into a non-visual medium they wouldn't be as big but that's not a criticism at all. In fact, it's the opposite. He was able to use the visual aspect of manga in a way that hasn't been done before. So in this video, I have a list that showcases said genius. I'll be going over what makes him stand out in this medium and how he used the stillness of manga to convey how much of an innovative genius he is. So by the end of this video, we're gonna find out the answer to the question of what makes Chainsaw Man special and what made the manga blow up the way it did. Aside from the visual storytelling that he's a master at, Fujimoto stands out from other mangaka because of his insane level of creativity. He is so uniquely creative like no one can copy his stories. They're very him if you know what I mean. His personality shines through his work to a level that I have seen very little authors get to. There isn't a single chapter that you read where you would feel like this is written by someone else. That's basically the essence of storytelling. In my opinion, it's the best form of communication. And Fujimoto stands above everyone else in that form of communication. In a way, I feel like I know Fujimoto a bit even though he's not in the limelight at all. And that's all because he uses his stories to communicate with the readers his ideas, thoughts, and feelings. Just look at Look Back, a one-shot that he wrote after Chainsaw Man Part 1 ended. It basically tells us his struggles with the manga creation process and he shows in a way how hard it is to get where he is at right now and how long of a journey it was. The story is basically about him. I can tell from the not-so-subtle signs like how literally the names of the main duo Fujino and Kiyomoto combined together they make up his name, Fujimoto. I think when you read Look Back with that in mind that both of these characters are parts of Fujimoto himself. You kind of feel like you understand how his mind operates and the conflicts that he goes through in his mind. Also with this manga, he showed us some of his personal struggles in doing manga. Most importantly though, he communicates to us why he makes manga. Even though it comes with great hardships and sometimes tragedies. On the other hand though, we have stuff that show his, um weird personality. Like how the motivation of one of the main villains in Fire Punch is that she wants to have a new remake of Star Wars. Or in Fire Punch when a character has a regenerative superpower, they make themselves into a meat farm. Or when someone has an electric superpower, they basically become human batteries. Another example of his weirdness is how he made Denji's first kiss to be someone vomiting in his mouth. And trust me, I tried so hard to find the tamest and most safer work examples. If you know, you know. I don't really need to give more examples, there are countless in his works. If you read anything from Fujimoto, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, it's a given that he's the most out-of-pocket mangaka ever. Whatever he's thinking, he will put into his manga and the thing about this is that his brain has the wildest ideas. Like, it's not only in his stories, this man is just wild. To show you how weird this man is, his official Twitter is him impersonating a little sister that he doesn't have. Yes, you heard that right. The man is just built different in all aspects and it all falls into his creativity. This creativity bleeds into every aspect of his manga from the plot to characters and even the paneling. But before we get into his paneling, I need to explain what paneling is. Okay, can you tell a difference between these two? Which one of these do you think is better? One of them is the page that Oda actually used. The one on the left, I changed the order of the panels just to show you how much of a difference paneling actually makes. Okay, as you can see here, the paneling lines up perfectly on the first part, which is not that bad. It didn't change a lot. Now we get to the big one, which is the second part, this right here. The reason this is bad paneling is because this panel doesn't flow well to this one. It gets cut by this one. And then when we skip that part, we get abruptly here. And we don't really get a very good understanding of how this monster moved. On the other hand though, this is the one that Oda actually used. As you can see here, the panel lines up perfectly. Everything flows as nicely as possible. And then it delivers us to the final panel. And with this final panel, we can actually see how the monster shaped up to be this way. He moved across the panels 
to show us this dynamic movement. And as you can see, it forms up a very well Z shape. Paneling is one of the most important things in manga. It's like directing for movies and TV shows, but for manga. It's basically how the information is going to be presented to the readers. And a mangaka's goal with paneling is to make an imaginary flow that leads the eye from the top of the page to the bottom of the page as easily and seamlessly as possible. And there are some rules to make that work, but... That's not really how Fujimoto operates. He doesn't usually follow the common paneling rules, but at the same time, he sticks out as having some of the best panel flow in the whole medium. Everyone that I know basically read all of Chainsaw Man in just a few sittings. That just goes to show how he made it very easy to read. He's so good at paneling that he came up with his own ways to panel and started relying on those more than the actual commonly used rules of paneling. Just look at this. He uses this role in so many different scenarios, but it's usually done to display a passing of time. Sometimes he uses it as slow motion for an action that's really fast, and he also sometimes uses it as a time lapse. And that could be for a long time or just a short period of time that a lot of events happened in it. By making the time flow kind of vague, and sometimes he uses it to show a normal time flow to elaborate on what's happening, like right here in this example. Another use of this rule is to show a character's emotional state and how they feel. Like in this example, he wanted to show Eri being overly excited and expressing that excitement to the main character. The man is such a giga chat that he made an entire one shot that's over 150 pages using only this format, except for some few panels. And that was done on purpose to enhance the moment. Another example of his creativity in paneling is this. He uses the sound effects as action lines like it becomes both the sound effect and the visual one too. And it works perfectly! Another use that he has for sound effects is a way to lead the viewer's eye across the panels. And although this isn't really a unique thing that he came up with, he uses it very well. He does some types of paneling to show off his creativity in the medium. Stuff that I haven't seen people even attempt before. I'll just give you a few examples. Here in this panel, he has the blood trickle down across the panels from Denji to Pachita's mouth. And he does it again here by showing Denji's body coming back together and to show that him and Puchira are fused. The reason these are done this way, crossing panels, breaking the page, it's to show that what's happening here is out of this world. Like it's a power that even breaks the manga itself. And that's also exactly what's happening in this example. Without any context, you can tell that this is an otherworldly power that's breaking into the panel to take the sacrifice. Something else that he does is that he uses multiple pages to show movement or change. He does it by keeping the object that's gonna change in the same spot in both pages and he does the transition that way it acts as a way to convey sudden or quick actions or just a cool transition okay I'll show you two examples what he does is that he has the object of interest in the panel stay in the same spot and then he just changes the background or the complete opposite and he changes the object of interest itself or sometimes he goes all wacky and does both he changes both but he keeps it in the same flow to show a flow of time and movement and sometimes he doesn't even change the panel at all just to show that some time has passed between this panel and the next. It's perfect for awkward silences. He uses this type of paneling a lot to show a character's emotions. Which leads me perfectly to my next point. Emotional paneling. The best thing that showcases his genius in paneling, in my opinion, is when he uses it to show emotions. I'll run through some examples showing his greatness at doing this. This is a great example of how Fujimoto shows emotions in his paneling. Basically, this girl right here is trying to express herself to this one, and she idolizes her. So with that, it comes with a lot of stress. So how does Fujimoto deal with this? How does he display that stress? By adding a lot of panels with the girl looking down, looking down, keeping the same expression. And as you can see, it works perfectly as a panel because she keeps looking down and then she's right here. And then it zooms up even more so it's still in flow and then it just zooms in here and then she raises her head to look her in the eye to show that she's getting out what she wants to say. And then the perfect facial expression. Someone who you hated actually admires you. And then here, even more cluttering of panels. And he starts with the face really far away. And then he starts zooming in more. And then he zooms right into the mouth to show how awkward the moment is and how hard it is to get those words out. This is another great example. How do you show someone being shocked and at the same time very scared? So as you can see here, he used this panel to show 
how isolated she is and how alone she feels. And then he put a panel alone of what's making her scared. And it's like an action movie. It keeps zooming in. And then here he zooms into her face. And then right here he zooms into her eye and into the thing that's actually scaring her the most. And I need to mention this, this is how great he is at paneling. Just look at this panel flow, it flows perfectly. It leads your eye perfectly from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. And that just builds up the atmosphere even more. Okay, I want you to look at this. One of the best things about stories is that they make you feel things. And a main aspect to achieve that is setting an atmosphere. Just like what he does here. He doesn't just let you witness the events, he makes you experience them with the characters. Like you just saw, it gives off an eerie feeling and in a way, very scary vibe. He can also set up a completely different atmosphere. Just look at this scene. Fujimoto started the scene with a toast like how a movie would do. And with this he sets off our expectations on what the atmosphere of the scene will be. And now we get to the juicy part. And that starts with these two people right here talking and we can see the conversation. And the panel just keeps moving along like how normal panels go. But as you can see here, the time flows with the panel. So everyone is doing their own thing and then the panel is just moving across time so we can see this person anxiously just sitting there scared because a fiend is right next to him and then she's causing a ruckus and he's just not in the conversation and he's calling Kumbeni over so it makes the panel more closed off and then this guy's just chilling drinking his beer and then she's over here doing just denji things here Hamaino's just also drinking her beer and also Kubeni is doing Kubeni things just getting lost and being you know Kubeni so with just this panel he sets off the entire vibe and the atmosphere of what's coming up next each character has their own characteristics that he showed in this one panel and it characterizes every single one for what they're gonna do for the entire chapter coming forward and even the chapter afterwards and all that was done with just one page this is Fujimoto's brilliance at visual storytelling and setting an atmosphere. All right, now that we talked a bit about emotional paneling, I just want to talk about how he shows emotions in his art. I want you to look at this. Without any context, what do you think he's feeling? Well, I'll tell you. Don't worry, I'll do it with no spoilers. Basically, he just witnessed a world-chattering event. Like, it breaks the rules of what was even possible in this world. And before that happened, he was incredibly exhausted and super sad. But the thing he just saw shocked him to the core. But it was also a really happy surprise. He thought someone that he loved had a certain death and they basically came out unscathed. And this was his reaction. What this panel wants to convey is that he's feeling an insane relief with pure happy confusion and also exhaustness. So with all that being said, do you really think that the level of emotion was achieved in this panel and it matches with the face that was drawn? On the other hand though, you can instantly know what this character is feeling, no need for context or anything. It's super expressive to the point where it's been used everywhere to convey the same feeling that Denji is having. Fujimoto is an absolute master at showing exactly how his character are feeling. He shows what the character is feeling very accurately without the use of any dialogue or he uses it a very small amount only to enhance the moment. And it's not only done on the main characters, he does it for reaction panels and even background characters. We as readers get the same feeling as the characters because of how he draws these emotions. It's not a coincidence that so many memes come out of Fujimoto's art. He's so good at expressing how a character feels and he makes you experience that feeling with the characters. He covers the in entire emotional spectrum. Sad, happy, weirded out, depressed, scared, grossed out, angry, or even if a character is feeling unsure, he knows how to display that. He truly is one of the best at showing emotions in his art, and to me this shows the level of mastery he has as a visual storyteller. And now for the big boy, action. One of the main reasons this man is considered a modern day genius is the way he shows action. He uses everything that I talked about in this video and more to have the best flow for action that I've seen in manga. If your first work of his was Chainsaw Man, you can tell this manga was going to have 
S tier action from the first chapter. Just look at this. As you can see here, he doesn't really draw the leg. He just does it as action lines to show how fast Denji is moving at this point. And then it naturally leads your eye to this face. And you can see that Denji is cutting through the eye. And here comes the brilliant part. He does a perfect transition to show that he cut his eye and then he continued to cut down really fast. And he basically cuts through the panel. It's this type of creative paneling that led him to where he is now. And I've never seen seen anyone even attempt to do this. And this quality and creativity was maintained throughout the whole run of Chainsaw Man, even in part 2. I'll show you some examples to showcase his greatness. Alright, I need to give context to this example. So there is an attacker coming to attack all these characters, and that attacker is super fast and really strong. So to show that, Fujimoto drops us in into this page with three characters already down, and he used the action lines to show how fast that happened. Then he isolated this character right here to show that he's different than the other guys and he's much stronger. So he basically gave him the rest of this page. And then we move on to the next panel with some great panel flow, which uses this page bubble right here. And then it leads us to this panel. So with this panel, this right here is the attacker. And we can see that they're going really, really fast. And to emphasize that speed, he used action lines all over the panel right here. And then we move on to this other panel and we see that the attacker already attacked and we don't even see the action happening we just see the aftermath the attacker already gave the kick and then he emphasizes how fast it's going with some more action lines that showcase the speed and here's where the creative panel flow in action comes in fujimoto used this panel to transition to the next panel in a really creative way he basically made the kick happen through the panels the character was kicked from this panel to this one and then he stumbled because of the power of the kick Fujimoto drops us in right after the character did his movement to show how fast he was. We only see the impact of the punch. We don't see it actually happening. It leads us right to his face. And then we can see the character actually falling. And the reason we can follow that is because of these right here, the sound effects. And then naturally it leads our eye to this. And then we can see the gun and he shot. And then the eye naturally goes down with the sound effects to the arm. And we see that he already took the action like super light speed. And now for the final example example that I have here and it's honestly one of my favorites. As you can see here he used the blood trail to show Denji's movement and it honestly just looks like a great piece of art. And now for the final thing that I have here that makes him stand out from other mangaka and that showcases his true genius at visual storytelling. His use of symbolism and items. For example, the door, like I mentioned earlier in the video. And there are multiple examples of this too you need to keep an eye out for. Like the devils in general, how it's symbolism and how it's commentary on real life things. Like the gun devil, it's the most powerful devil because it's something that took away so many lives so easily with so little consequences. That's why it's one of the scariest things. Another example is the one that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the door. How it's symbolism for Denji's childlike mentality and his fear. Near the end of the story, it's explored a lot more and we find out so many things about Denji and the story going forward because of that. The rest of these, I won't comment on them much and I'll let you decipher them on your own when you're reading and watching Chainsaw Man. The first one, Denji being compared to dogs. The second one, hugs. And the third one, the use of suits. So the answer to what makes Chainsaw Man special is Fujimoto. That's why it stands out. And honestly, with all this, I didn't even cover everything. There are so many things that make Fujimoto stand out from other mangaka. And he is essentially the reason that made Chainsaw Man blow up the way it did.